Hello everyone and welcome to the instructional video on how to properly fine tune your dual record player to the cartridge. Uh, today I will be using a dual 701 for demonstration purposes, but these exact same steps are applicable to many different types of dual record players, the list of which can be found down below in the description. Um, this is a relatively simple procedure and without too much technical knowledge you can uh, do it yourself but of course I have to mention that you must always be very careful because uh, the uh, cartridge and the stylus are the most sensitive parts of the record player. We will be looking at three different things. Uh, first of all we will adjust the positioning of the cartridge inside the head shell um, using this alignment tool. Then we will be looking at the uh, tracking force of the record player using this um, tracking force skill. Now this is a special skill with um, a piece of plastic in the middle and inside this plastic is a black dot. And it is made so that uh, you won't damage the tip of your stylus. But and next to this we will be looking at the anti-skating which is situated here. And I will tell you some more about that in a bit. But first we will start off by taking out the head shell. Um, if your cartridge has a guard like this one, you can. I would advise you to put it down like so, and then you can safely take out the uh, cartridge. So you hold the cartridge, which is this lower bit, piece of plastic below the metal piece, and you hold it, and you push back this rod, and the cartridge comes out. Make sure it doesn't hit anything underneath here, and you lift it up like so. While the cartridge is out, we can uh, immediately take the opportunity to look at the state of uh, these contacts here. These are slide contacts which uh, are used to transfer the signal. And there are push contacts on the head shell, as you can see here. They are pushed in and they push against these slide contacts. Now, oftentimes these slide contacts uh, contain some oxidation and to remove that oxidation, I would recommend you put a little bit of WD-40 or any similar type of product on a piece of cotton bud and gently rub these metal pieces up and down like so. Now we're gonna take a look at the cartridge and the head shell. As you can see, this is a Shure M75 Type D cartridge, and this is a cartridge that is especially made for this type of record player. And uh, there will be two steps in removing it. Uh, first, we're gonna use a pair of tweezers to carefully remove these leads. Forget where they uh, don't forget where they were, because they're often not color coded. Gonna steadily grab the cartridge and push it back. Pull the front up and then take it out. As you can see, this is the mechanism and this is how it works. So there's this piece here with a rail that latches onto this piece here. And the other way around, it simply clicks into place. So we move the cartridge first in that direction and then simultaneously move it up to take it out like so. So the next step would be to mount the cartridge. Uh, we'll take our empty head shell over here and we'll put the cartridge in like so and first we're going to do a dry run and we're going to use this uh, head shell uh, alignment gauge tool which is available on our website the link of which is down below in the description uh, and we're just going to hold this like so hold it in place so that the holes are aligned uh, take this off make sure that the needle doesn't touch the uh, the head shell gauge and check whether the alignment is correct now, that is not the case in this situation because I'll show you here. Uh, here we can see the tip of the needle and the tip of the needle has to be on exactly the same height as this piece right here. So don't hold them crooked like so, but hold them parallel and look over them and see where the needle is. So what we're gonna do here is just slightly raise the cartridge. And for that, we are going to be using a head shell spacer kit. And this uh, kit is also available on our website. Uh, the link is again below in the description. We'll just open the bag here, take out the spacers. The spacers are labeled for the number of millimeters that they are uh, thick. Uh, so we can see we have a 1.0, 1.5, 2.0 and 2.5. Um, now, what I usually do is hold it like this and look at it and hold this piece in between here to estimate the height. So this is the 1.0 piece, which is not enough. 
this is the 2.0 piece and this is looking to be perfect so i'm going to use this piece and again we'll place our cartridge in the head shell and hold it for now make sure to be very careful on these steps and hold it flat like so and if we look at it from the side and you can see that the tip of the needle is touching the top of the alignment tool so this is the perfect height so now that we have found the appropriate size uh, spacer for our cartridge uh, the next step will be to add some screws to keep it firmly in place and for this step i'd recommend you put some sort of a protective cover on or if that's uh, not possible in your case then just take off the cartridge this audio technica cartridge is removed like this but uh, please uh, check for your own cartridge how this works um, so we're going to need a set of mounting screws. Uh, we're going to use this set that is available on our website, the link to which is down below in the description. This is a very nice set of screws uh, made of made up of aluminium, and this is to uh, uh, to keep the the head the head of the record player as light as possible, the head of the toner, um, and to prevent any magnetic interference uh, from occurring, uh, which can distort sound. Um, so we're just going to take these screws out. Basically, there's a lot of different uh, lengths of screws and uh, they will fit practically every cartridge that is out there. So I'll just eyeball the right length first. So hold it next to the cartridge like so. And yeah, seems about right. So I'll then just undo the screw like so. Be very careful not to uh, lose this. Uh, luckily, the uh, there's a lot of different nuts. So uh, if you lose one, uh, it's not the end of the world and then we will push the uh, screw through the spacer and this is a very snug fit printed with a very tight tolerance and this is done uh, in order to prevent the screws from falling out during mounting which makes stuff uh, a lot more a lot easier so now we have pushed the screw through and as you can see everything is firmly being kept in place so that's very nice and helpful and then we will mount the cartridge, make sure that it's in the correct orientation. So the needle side facing on the towards the narrow side of the head shell. And then we will add the nut like so. And then I'll put my finger on it and use a tight, uh, uh, a tight uh, screwdriver to tighten it like so. And these are very, very nice. Uh, those nuts as you can see they have a small slit in the side and you can just put your nail in there and uh, basically make them hand tight don't tighten it all the way yet because you might have to adjust the positioning later so now we're going to go over to the next screw and repeat the same procedure and restrain the nut with our thumb while we use our other hand to tighten the screw this is a bit of a difficult task and then again use our nail to uh, to hold the screw like so tighten it fully and then loosen it again check it one more time this and this cartridge is straight and then we can tighten these screws while holding the cartridge and the head shell like so tighten the other screw like so the next step will be to take the cartridge that is properly aligned and put it back into Put the head shell back into the tone arm so we'll just push it in like so push it up and pull this lever back so we're going to look at it from another angle so as you can see this groove goes into this bit here and you push it all the way up push this up and then pull the lever back so the next step will be to add the proper tracking for the correct tracking force and for that we will uh, use the skill uh, the skill is also available on our website, the link to which uh, you can find in the description. So what we're going to do is just free the arm, make sure that the protective cover of the, uh, of the cartridge is off. Turn on this scale, wait for it to go to zero, and then just hoover the arm over and drop it on there. Now this particular cartridge needs 1.25 grams of uh, tracking force and the way in which we're going to do that is by adjusting uh, this here. 
So this is the back of the toner, and we'll start in the resting position at zero. And uh, there are three ways in which you can adjust the weight. So the idea is that you first balance the uh, the, the tone arm by uh, hovering it freely like so. And then it should be balancing like a seesaw. Uh, so as you can see now, the front is too heavy. And there are three ways in which you can adjust it. So this will be put to zero. Uh, we can undo the screw that is right here. And by undoing the screw, we can have uh, change the course adjustment like so. So we're gonna just go a bit back to where we were before. And there's a, then there's the final adjustment, which you can see here. Uh, and this allows you to uh, adjust the position of the uh, the counterweight very finely. So again, we're gonna hover it. Yes. So we're reaching the balancing position. So what we're gonna do now is tighten this and put this to 1.25 grams, which is right in between here. And then we're gonna test again. So we'll put the tone arm on the scale again, like so. As you can see, it reads 1.59 grams now. So I'll take it back off again, gently, and return this so the counterweight goes back a bit more. As you can see, we've reached the end here, so I'll just go forward a bit, move it back a bit, and then try again. Now it's 1.0 grams, so I'll just take it off again and use the fine adjustment to uh, move the move the counterweight forward a bit more, like so. And check it again, and keep doing this until you reach the right uh, tracking force for your cartridge. Uh, if you don't know it by heart, then uh, I would recommend you to just Google uh, the the type of cartridge that you have. with 1.22 now, which is good enough for me. So now we're gonna go over to the next step, which is the anti-skating. So the anti-skating is basically the force with which the arm is pulled back. So as you can see here, I put the anti-skating to zero now. Yeah, I hope you can read it like this. Yeah, and nothing is happening. And if I turn the anti-skating up, then the tone arm slightly comes back. So this is adjusting for the out, uh, the inward force uh, that the needle has in the groove. And uh, there's two types of anti-skating. One looks like a circle. This, this is for spherical needles. And one looks like an ellipse. This is for elliptical needles. Usually you can distinguish them because, uh, for example, a lot of the Sure models uh, say an E somewhere in the model number if you have an elliptical stylus. But if you're not sure, just uh, Google it and check it. What uh, check what's the what's the case for your stylus? So we'll put it on 1.25 as well. In this case, we're using a spherical needle for the uh, Audio Technica AT91. So we'll use this inner scale here. So this is one. This is two. 1.5, 1.25. So we'll screw this. And we'll turn it to 1.25. Um, yeah, so uh, that was it. So I'll put the cartridge back in, took it out for showing the anti-skating. And uh, that's the adjustment done. If you have any questions, please leave them down below in the description. Uh, all the parts that were uh, used in this video, you can buy on our website, www.artofvinyl.nl. Uh, the link is down in the description. And if you buy the full package, you'll of course get a discount. Uh, thank you very much. And I wish you the best of luck with uh, adjusting your own cartridge.